Good tidings, all you beautiful individuals. You best believe that we are back on League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you beauties as we are deep in the thick of it. Knees deep in the offseason. Already probably the biggest, baddest headline moves have already happened. So today I'm going to, we're going to talk about something that many might consider blasphemous, Mark. Because I'm comparing and I'm on the LCS side Two of the two biggest offseason moves to me. We can talk about Canyon going to Gen G. That's a big one. But I'm looking at number one, T1, re-signing all their five players. I think that was a little unexpected. But I'm saying the biggest offseason move is actually Cloud9 getting JoJo PMR. And I know everyone's going to roll their eyes at that one. It's crazy. I'm telling you that much out of the very get-go here. Because what we are looking at... When we use stay a statement like that, there's a lot of things swirling around the mind that you're thinking of. T1 is the big one, of course, that jumps out. Canyon, as you mentioned, and maybe, maybe even throw in a side sprinkling of what's been happening in the LEC. Uh, yeah, the Vitality, Perks, Mateo swap situation, reuniting with Yankos and Wonder. But yes, I think it is time that we have a little conversation and talk about how big Jojo Pian moving to Cloud9 and staying in the LCS is for the region, for the team Cloud9. It's a lot to be digging into this one. Why this type of move can be compared or even talked about with the likes of some of these other mega hits this offseason. So obviously, T1 getting all five returning means the global competitive scene runs through T1 yet again as the defending world champions who looked so unbelievably dominant throughout that bracket stage they're going to be the number one team global rankings blah 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 yes it's massive it's amazing the dynasty because now i'm going to call it with these guys coming back is going to continue but the reason i'm saying jojo going to cloud nine is actually bigger is now it feels like cloud nine has the entire hope and weight of an entire region on their shoulders you're talking about a team that has transitioned as the TSM's CLG legacies leave the LCS they are at the summit of LCS in terms of fandom brand recognition and I mean they've been winning over the last few splits now with Jojo coming the last two MVPs are on this C9 roster but you add who is the biggest face of the league in Jojo onto the biggest team and it feels like we're excited about Cloud9. We're super hyped about Cloud9 and nothing else in the LCS. They have to drag this entire league by themselves in 2024. It's it's remarkable to think that this is where we are at with the history of the LCS and the history of the Cloud9 organization. But it seems to be so, as you mentioned. They are the last pillar really remaining, holding up this LCS, the old you know type of any type of relevancy when you're looking at it and what they could do the type of history the results they bring internationally which hey you might have a couple of lec people laughing which you know if i'm from the lec i'm not laughing at the lcs after this past year secondly you do need to pay respect to that attendance to the records all these type of things that consistency that cloud9 has shown to be attending at that type of level which i understand maybe a bar too low for some but i think right now for the lcs for western teams that is where it's got to be, and Cloud9 has been there, and they've been doing it for the last little bit here. And hanging on to a player like Jojo Pion, that's the big point we need to get to here. Because, yes, there's a lot of things that we can be flowery about. Cloud9 still being one of the last of the old guards remaining. Sure, Dignitas is around here somewhere, and Immortals and whatever. <laughs> and, uh, Team Liquid is actually pretty solid, but they've gone more so down that TLCK route the last little bit here, so can't quite jump on with them. But Cloud9 hanging on to Jojo Pyun for the region. That's going to be a big one to look at. And listen, we've heard now from multiple sources, LCK teams, Lip Sandbox contacting for Jojo, multiple LEC teams, pretty much every team in the LCS. I know this guy gets incredibly hyped up, but now this domestic duo of Blabber and Jojo and sound like a broken record every year. This is the LCS's best chance 
internationally because as soon as Worlds ends, we're immediately opening up for 2024. But this, what this does for, Cloud9 was already at the top. You know, Team Liquid has the only other remaining old guard team from, you know, the early days of the LCS. We're talking 2013, 2014 when they were still cursed. They're the only ones left and they haven't been that relevant over the last couple years. I know 2022, they were making some noise. They still get to Worlds, but Cloud9 for two straight years, really three out of the last four years have been that premier LCS team. And now you're getting the premier mid laner that has gotten international recognition. And I don't know if there's ever been higher expectations for an LCS roster. It may, you'd have to go back to the 2017 TSM years. You know, uh, whether you dislike the Crocs, whether you dislike the young, you know, brash kind of attitude. It's, it's stuff, what we stuff, need. Stuff. It all is that package. I think regardless of whether you like it or not, you got to acknowledge the results that Jojo Pian has been able to dish out. That skill, that raw talent that I think is undeniable at this point, given the track record, given the results, given the gameplay that we have seen and can revert back to to look at what this guy has done, and especially even last year, looking at an evil geniuses team that was dragged through everything by Mr. Jojo Pyeong to any type of success that they experienced last year. Yes, this guy is a big deal, and he is stepping into those shoes with Cloud9. You mentioned alongside Blabber, and that is one of the big things I want to mention because there's a lot of times where, you know, great talent comes through in a region and it doesn't quite come together. It doesn't quite assemble the way a lot of the fans like to think about it. How many times have we talked about a pipe dream of a blabber jojo pian combo what that could be for the region what power having a mid jungle duo at that type of level can do for your region internationally and jojo pian and blabber that is about as close as north america is ever going to get to dreaming about one of those duos causing damage on the international stage and by the way contracts and palafox winning an lcs title this past uh year that's the first time that a domestic mid-jungle duo from NA has won the LCS ever. Well, I, I, going back to, okay, 2013 TSM Spring, the first split, the odd one, and Reginald. After that, I mean, if you're, uh, and of course the Cloud9, high medios. But that's it. So we're almost approaching 10 years where that's happened. And now, obviously, expectations are going to be a title for this Cloud9 squad. And I just want to say, I'm not saying... This means Cloud9 is better than T1. Of course not. I'm not downplaying the significance that T1 re-signing all five world champions does because they will be, as I said, the favorites, the best team in the LCK. The dynasty lives on. But an entire region is being propped up by Cloud9. Kind of T1 is propping up the LCK as well. But look at these Gen G rosters, these Hanwha Life rosters. T1 doesn't re-sign this roster if we go down that dark route and in the alternate timeline type of thing, the LCK still survives. It still moves on. There's still interest in rebirth. All these type of things happen. The LCS could very well crash and burn if a player like Jojo Pyun leaves the region, a squad like Cloud9 then is like, well, what, what do we do? You know, we're not really at the level that we want to compete at. There's nobody really in the offering pool. All these type of things change. And then maybe you're having a, one of the pillars like Cloud9 start to reevaluate and step away. And, you know, what type of commitment they're going to have to the LCS like their other friends they have seen come and go throughout this league. So Jojo Pyun staying with this squad, Cloud9 realizing the type of excitement, type of interest that a player like Jojo Pyun is generating and having to re-up that offer to secure them, get that, put that money where your mouth is and lock them down for the LCS, it is a big deal, folks. And take it with a grain of salt, but you know, guys like Jack always saying, Cloud9, yeah, yeah, we're, we're still making money in this esports winter. All these other teams are folding. Cloud9 looking pretty. I know that they're involved in multiple other esports titles, but if that is the case, and again, we're taking it with a grain of salt, Cloud9's only going to get further and further ahead of the rest of the league if they're going to be the only ones willing to spend the money to get a guy like Jojo Pian or to get these marquee free agents over to Cloud9. They, they hit the ground running, this split ahead of us here. I think it is unstoppable, the Cloud9 fan base, and how much they will pick up, how much they'll scoop up 
from the rest of the LCS Ocean from some of these squads that have abandoned the NA faithful over these last little bit. They will be joining the Cloud9 faithful. If you get Jojo Pyun Blabber popping off, this squad shows that they are going to be most likely one of your invites to an MSI event. They should have a comp competitive level, those type of things. That's where it's going to start. And it all does start with that mid-jungle duo, that North American pride of Blabber and Jojo Pyun. Throw in Vulcan in there to help JoJo start talk some trash on Twitter and <laughs> XTSM, XCLG fans, you're all welcome under the Cloud9 umbrella as we ascend to the savior of the LCS. I don't know about that. They still might be dead, <laughs> even with all this hype for Cloud9. But the fact that it seems like it's mostly on one team is... Again, a little bit of the doom and gloom for the LCS going forward. But hopefully greener pastures in 2024. But that is it today for Liga Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you beautiful people as always. Thank you so much for tuning in and we will catch you on that flippity flip.